finished in Chelmsford. Only to be confronted by a massive 7,000 people when she arrives at Lakeside. And I'm 29 and I'm acting like I'm 70. <laughs> Some 8,000 fans later, and Katie's absolutely shattered. So that's that done. But I do say to everyone, it can happen at any minute because the head's engaged and it really can happen at any minute. So... So it's a pleasant surprise to have a special welcoming party waiting for her at home. Any presents for me? Hearing of the crowds who were there for Katie, Pete wants to know if his fans were there too. Anyone, anyone ask about me? Oh, they all asked. Did they? Yeah. <coughs> What'd they say? What do you reckon they asked? Is he getting better? How's Pete and how's Harvey? <coughs> did, they, did you tell them my chest yeah, is getting they... bigger? <coughs> how's Pete, how's Harvey? And then you get the odd one going. How's Junior? And That's all right, little buddy. Little buddy, they'll Mine. all be ringing you soon, wanting to Careful. see you, mate. Come on in. Do you want to get in the bath with Mummy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. No, it doesn't want. You stay with Mum then, okay, for a minute. What's this? Baby. Good boy. Mummy. Coming up, can Pete finally exercise his demons? I have a problem with drink. I don't need to stop drinking. I need to find a way to start drinking. Will they ever agree on a family plan? Five. You would never wait five years, Pete. Uh, I can't wait. Neither am I waiting five years. I'll have to divorce you and go with someone else. And is Katie enjoying her baby shower just a little too much? You've put up with me for three years. I've got my kids now. Now I'm free to go out and party. <laughs> It's the 11th of June, 18 days before Katie's due date, and with his wife enjoying the build-up to her new arrival, Pete's life couldn't be better. He'd like to be the perfect dad, but he worries about his recurring panic attacks. Um, I noticed that since I had the meningitis, and uh, since Harvey's accident, recent accident, it's brought back the panic attacks that I hadn't had for nearly two years. So I've decided to go and see, from what I've been told, one of the best therapists. And I'm going to address a few issues. Hello there, how are Hi. you? Nice Professor Stephen Palmer is an expert in cognitive behavioural therapy. There's, there's things that I've, I've been meaning to talk about for a while. And as I found I'm not talking about them, I'm just getting more and more... Uh, out of control with them. For example, um, I have a problem with drink. I don't need to stop drinking. I need to find a way to start drinking. I won't go anywhere. That's alcohol based. Um, the other one is that I've, I've been on medication for quite a few years but I've been on such a minimal dose now for the last year and a half because I'm scared of coming off it. Um, okay, so how much have you been on originally? Then when did you start? Okay, well my first my first panic attack, or my first anxiety attack, was in 1998, middle of 1998. Okay. Quite useful mm. for me to get an, an idea of some of the issues, yeah. and then we'll come back to them, because it sounds like there's some, some of them may be interlinked, of course. Yeah, absolutely. So, so they've got the medication, which it's also tied in with the panic. Anything else I should know about? There was a lot of violence when I lived in Australia. I had knives pulled at me a lot in clubs. I'd had even a gun put to my head. Put it this way, I had every fear not to go out. Mm. So I was always targeted on my own. It happened too many times um, to the point that I feared going anywhere that resembled a nightclub.
but occasionally you do want to go out you know mm. we're young we're not we're not because as far as I can see, I can see how it's, it's started now, yeah. and it's been, it's like baggage you've been walking around with that, now. It has, and, and it's come back to haunt you. It. <laughs> Got a few problems, I think. Um, if I may, if I can ask you now specifically to think back to when you had your first panic attack. Don't even know how it happened. Don't know what I was thinking. Started shaking. My heart started beating. I thought I was hyperventilating. Never experienced that before. Mm. My hands got clammy. For the next two and a half to three years I suffered 20 to 30 panic attacks a day mm. seven days a week each panic attack lasted between 20 and 30 minutes it was horrific that is a very exhausting day day after day of it were there some days it was a little bit better never no, no, for okay. the first three years I thought that was that was the only time ever ever in yeah. my life I thought about suicide it's yeah. only time I think what people don't realise, people think of depression and suicide. They forget, actually, people with panic attacks actually can feel very suicidal because it's such an unpleasant thing to feel all yeah. the time. You're on edge, you're not relaxing. You can't even get to sleep properly for some people. Two years later, I'm spending two weeks in a psychiatric... two and a half weeks in a psychiatric ward in New York, and that was my start of the medication. And I know I don't need this medication, I just know it. You, you know in your body, you know in your mind if you're fine. I'm fine. Now, today, you have raised a handful of different issues, but I think they can all be helped by cognitive behaviour therapy. The research would back me up on this, so it's actually very useful for dealing with panic attacks, also for coming off drugs. Surely you want to be master of your own life, of your own destiny. At the moment, you're fearful of it. Yeah. You're holding yourself back, and I think if you do trigger a panic attack, you'll learn how to control it very quickly without having to resort back to any medication. That would be the, I, I think that would be an ideal goal. Does that, set, does that make sense to you? Sounds that? very good to me. Yeah. With only two weeks to go, Katie is busy with her manager Claire planning a joint baby shower so they can let their hair down before the birth. We're having a joint baby shower. It's not really the thing to do in England. It's more like an American thing, isn't it? I know, we have to keep explaining to people that I... Well, what do we bring? What do we do? But we just want our friends to come and have a really girly afternoon. I've no idea what to expect, but um, Claire and Nicola and everyone else here have organised... They've got to have goodie bags. How can you come to a party and not have a goodie bag? Perfect. Should we make one bag up so Look we can this. see? Kate doesn't even know about this. He's only arrived I don't know this everything. morning. If there's a gift voucher which entitles you to a free pole dancing lesson. No. So everyone is being given a pole dancing lesson. We've got towels. Let's got look at what we've got. Perfume. Should we make one bag up? So Let's have a look. So we've got perfume. Perfume. Soap and... Glory. Glory. Mascara. Your album. Single. And a book. And your pole dancing lesson. The bags are worth about £800 to £1,000 each girl will take home with her. I would love that, wouldn't I you? Because then that. everyone feels that they've gone a bit That's special. That's a goodie bag. I love it, I love, love it. It's the day before the baby shower and 13 days until the baby is due. Claire has arranged for a marquee to be erected in Katie and Peter's garden. With the marquee in place, Peter decides to check out what's happening inside. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. The girls can, can stick to their shower day. We're going we're gonna to do a, a poker day, the boys. Poker day. So all See, the guys like are coming them. and we're going to set up poker tables. It's going to be great. You it's lovely. Texas hold em. Love it. I, I've played Hold'em with girls, but it's a whole different game. It's a little bit <laughs> naughty, but, but, but yeah, Texas Hold'em is good too. <laughs> um, but yeah, this would be great. So what have you got? I don't even know what's going to go on. Well, the brief I was given was Alice in Wonderland meets girly pink. Oh, heaven. yes, yes. So um, yes. we've got some oversized yeah. props to make it like Alice in Wonderland. So those are the chairs that are kind of... And we'll do a big buffet really? table that's Pretty too hot. big. No, it should be good. I mean, she doesn't know what the theme is. She doesn't know anything that's going on. So I think this oh, is really? Yeah. 
Pop um, back later and have a look. Yes. Yeah. Are you sure you want that? Maybe <laughs> come back later. If you'd like to. <laughs> See, ya. See you later. It's the 17th of June and the baby shower is now just hours away. Katie's getting the full treatment. Her girlfriends are getting in the mood. Yeah, you two can drink, can't you? Yes. Are you going to get pissed? Yeah, I'm going to make a fool of myself. Uh, Katie still has no idea what's waiting for her inside the marquee. What do you do? We'll sit in a circle, have a cup of tea and cakes and just talk. Honestly, that's what we think. I don't, what else is it? A big sack of nappies and a nappy bin and oh, a nappy and that's all. That. <laughs> But I can't wait to see all your faces with your goodie bags. Why are you looking good looking? It's very fascinating. Oh, you look good, yeah. You look really nice. I'm giving kisses for anyone that's complimenting. I want one. Hello. Ooh. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. You smell nice. What are you wearing? Armani. Mm. You know, for the old posh kids. Where are the kitties? Yeah. Harvey's upstairs on the computer, Junior asleep. So are you excited, Kate, or what? It's your day today, babe. Yeah, it's, it's all the presents that I've got. It's for our baby, I know. It's for both of us. We yeah, both benefit, but... but I'm the lucky one who opens it now. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I really don't. Well, I'm sure all shall be revealed to those who wait. Patience is a virgin. Oh, I'm going to have loads of kids, I am. If I can get, like, baby showers like this every time. <laughs> we do one a year. Yeah. No, this is more than enough now for a long time. What's a long time? What's a long time? <laughs> we can wait five, five years. Five? You would never wait five years, Pete. Uh, uh, I can't go Neither am I waiting five years. I'll have to divorce you and go with someone else. <laughs> As Katie and Claire's guests start arriving, the final preparations for their joint baby shower are well underway. So your theme is that, oh, look at that poker tape. Now that's all I care about right there. See ya. Hello, everyone. Let's start. I'm ready to kick some ass. One thing being in the public eye. Look at the bloody goodies you get. Look at that. That is, that is good. <laughs> Pete's got his poker school, but Claire has made sure the girls are catered for too, including inviting top clairvoyant Michelle Knight. I used to see Michelle about 12 years ago, and she told me a lot of things that have come true since then. Some of which you didn't want to hear at the time, but I knew I was right. Yes, you were. And the Mad Hatter magician is keeping everyone entertained. Here we go. Ready? Focus your energy now! Oh. Oh, my God. Okay. Just a minute, lift it up a little bit for me. Oh, where does that work? No, okay, just a minute. Okay. Where are the wires? Okay, just a minute. Okay, down, here we go, down, we go, we go, go, go. Drop. Okay. Then hold it again. Oh, too slow. Oh. <laughs> okay. One-handed. Oh, one-handed. One -handed. Okay. The big trick! That was pretty good, actually. <laughs> Just one with a pair of three. That's unbelievable. <laughs> oh. Do you know what? Have you seen this carefully? Yeah, you know, 14 or one. What? She's very good. Well, what's she say to you? She told you shit at golf. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> no, but that was, that was spot on. Now, that, nice, that, 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 that is gorgeous. Thank you for that. That's all right. Hey, I'm divorcing you anyway. I've got my baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, you've got me for three years. I've got my kids now. Now I'm free to go out and pub. Oh. <laughs> um, I reckon Kate should go with her girlfriends in about a couple of weeks, go away for a, a few of days. Oh, my God. Oh, Hold on, weeks, in a I will of weeks. be cut up like a surgeon's yeah. piece of meat. Well, that's I won't why I be bloody going anywhere. That's why that's I know what you what won't be you shagging are. anyone. But what I want to do is make uh, sure that... No, she's, in cut my my she's cut up my mouth. She's cut up my mouth. And then when you come back, I'll go with a few friends. You're not going anywhere. See? <clears throat> see? It's nearly the end of the baby shower and time to see how Kate and Claire's friends react when they're given their luxury goodie bags. We've only got our closest friends here and... Yeah, so we've got you <laughs> something. <laughs> you just wait. Because yeah, hardly yeah. anyone's been to a baby shower. We wanted you to take something. Because me and Kate will have our babies as our memories, and we wanted you to all take something away with you. So we've got no, some goodie bags for you. What I say? Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. They all should have gone. Now, just terrible. you can all open. Oh, yeah. Take a seat. Take it. It's gone really well today. Um, I haven't stressed. Everyone's really enjoyed themselves. Look at them all, all opening. This is what we wanted, wasn't it? So they all got away with something as well. I think we should do this more often. I think we should wear Yeah, it would be good. Coming up, can Katie face up to her needle phobia? Your mind has to stop being me, 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 and it has to be, I'm about to become a mum again. You're right. It's Wednesday the 20th of June and with just nine days to go till the birth, Katie is making another visit to her Harley Street obstetrician. Katie's fear of needles is increasingly taking over her thoughts, so her anaesthetist has agreed to spell out the pre-birth procedures to help calm her nerves. We are an hour late. She's an hour late. He's done his hair. Basically... I'm so needle phobic and it has started from when I've had blood tests. It is, it's been an ongoing thing and it's got worse and worse. It, they've just demolished my arms because they can never get blood out of me. I, I'm so excited to have the baby and excited about everything, but I'm not. It, I'm excited to be pulled in that room and I don't care not being cut, it's just the needle. Okay. All I want to do is just lie there like that and you do it. But I know I'm going to play up. <laughs> You're not so going to play up, believe me. I don't tolerate any playing up. That's the first thing. Well, I don't <laughs> mean to. And I'll be going to... No, no, wait, wait. And then I'll just be going... Hold nuts. on a second. I take complete control of the situation once we go into the operating theatre. Because you're not meant to be in control. I'm the person who's meant to be in control. Yeah. And that's what I do all day, every day. If you are playing up, I will get quite cross. Okay. That's good, but I'll only be playing up because I'm scared I of the know. needle. Other than I that, know. I'll be absolutely fine. I know. I will be standing behind you. The first thing I'm going to do is paint your back down with icy cold antiseptic. And I'm going to tell you now how it's going to be, the reality of how it's going to yeah. be, okay? So that you'll know exactly what to expect. Yeah, don't lie to me because no. then I'll exactly. go mad. Then you feel <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. No, no yeah, good. That's fine. <laughs> now, the next thing we will do is put in some local anaesthetic. And I'm not going to lie, that stings and pinches for about 30 seconds. So it's jolly mm. uncomfortable. It's more than anything else. 30 seconds of pinching on that needle to me. It's all right. It will be fine. And then it all goes numb. And what you will feel... Will I feel, feel the epidural going numb? You'll feel pushing in your back. It won't be painful. What, it like, won't be sharp. Like that kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be a bit like being at the dentist, where you feel what oh, he's like doing, this is the question, but it's not right? painful. That if you answer this, what well, I think you're going to answer, then I'm, 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 I might as well pass out now. Lumbar puncture, what's worse? Epidural or lumbar puncture? Lumbar puncture. Oh, phew. And I had it. Good, because he had that not long ago oh, and he said it was the worst pain. Was next to me. They didn't okay. even tell me what they were doing. Oh, at least you said the right answer there, because if you would have said they're about the same or something, I would have just passed out. You see, what we're going to do is we're also going to do a lumbar puncture for you. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, not like what he had. No, not like what he had. Exactly. Not at all like what he had. <laughs> OK, we've got to talk about this. Um, <laughs> you, you are talking to someone that's um, psychologically disturbed. I don't mean, I don't mean she's got problems. It's just the needle. In this when you say lumbar punch, but I won't feel that, though, will I? When I put the epidural needle in, just like the last time, I'm going to put a second needle through it. 
and put a tiny dose of local anaesthetic into the fluid around your spine and that is a lumbar puncture but you won't be aware of it at all. Oh that's all right then. You won't be aware of it. Oh as long as I don't that's fine. Yeah. I cannot put in an epidural <sighs> safely without your absolute cooperation. I know how worried she is. I can, I can tell I really am. Um, it it makes me go stiff. Well, you see, I know you're worried. I really do understand how frightened you are. I, I really do this work frightened. all of the time. I meet women and deal with women all day, every day, who are absolutely terrified. Some of them are a lot worse than you. You see how calm I am? You are calm. This is because I do this work all day, every day, and I'm very good at it. I know I'll be fine once you, the needles, and I'll be absolutely fine. It's just you getting that needle in my back. You will be so excited to see this you know, baby. I want you to see a, a hypnotherapist, whatever they're called, because I'm not that It doesn't make any difference, because at the end of the day, it's down to you. It's down to you being mum, because that's what actually ha has to happen the morning you're having the cesarean. Your mind has to stop being me, 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 and it has to be, I'm about to become a mum again, and I have to do the right thing for my baby and for me for the next ten minutes. Right. So at the end of the operation, Mr. Gibb will put some suppositories in your bum. You won't be aware of it. <laughs> what? He did it last time also. It's part he of our standard what? procedure. No. I'm embarrassing. There is no, there is no dignified way to have a baby. Let me tell you that from the outset, well, in he, case you he haven't figured what? it out. Why did he do that? Do you want me to go to the toilet there and then? No, it doesn't make you go to the toilet at all. It's, <gasps> it's pain medication. It's absorbed in oh, your bum. I can't bum. believe I look at this You're guy completely in the face. unaware of it. You're completely unaware of it. And he does it every day. Just and the catheter, doesn't he? I didn't know he'd done all that. I yep. forgot I had a catheter until a few months ago. And I said to him, I can't believe you saw my thingy. So of course, it's the why... obstetrician. He has to see everything. So that's why the day the baby was born, you were a pain in the eye. <laughs> oh, very funny. I think she thinks I'm nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, you're I think she's a strong woman because she's like, I don't take crap. You're gonna. Have to I didn't use those like, words. No, she didn't say them words. <laughs> but basically, she's like, I'm very strict, <laughs> and I, I need that. I can't have someone going. Okay, we wait till you're ready. You just need to do it. Straightforward. Give you the message. Katie now knows exactly what to expect next Friday, but will she be able to hold herself together when the needle's on its way? Coming up next week on The Baby Diaries, just how will Katie cope with her needle phobia? Definitely, you definitely won't put it in until you absolutely know you've got a vein, will you? Could you relax? I have done this before. Will Katie's nerves get the better of her? And will Pete be supportive for his wife? Yeah, you're a lot calmer. Even me, I'm not even crying yet. <laughs> Get show catch-ups and much more. Text Katie to 8339. Text costs two standard rate messages.